All right, I wanted to... I wanted to point out something about Faraday's law. I haven't, I haven't said very much, uh, very much about, about mutual inductance. We talked about it just a little bit. But, but you know something about inductors. So uh, here's an inductor here, uh, two loops. Here's an inductor here. An inductor is just a coil of wire. Because it's wire, then it doesn't have much resistance. We, for the most part, we neglect the resistance. We can't always neglect it. Uh, there's a resistance in this part of the circuit, but on the left-hand side, or this part with N1, there's no resistance shown. So, so there has to be a resistance somewhere, and that ends up just being the, the wire itself is the resistance in that side on the left. The left-hand side has two loops. The right-hand side has... One, two, I don't know, either three or four. It's hard to count. Three, I guess. Um, and you know something about inductors. The voltage across an inductor depends on the, sorry, the voltage around a loop by Faraday's law depends on the time rate of change of the magnetic field inside the conductor. Uh, sorry, inside the loop, through the loop. So the time rate of change of the, ma of the magnetic flux through the loop tells you the voltage through, uh, developed around one <coughs> loop. If you have more than one loop, the total voltage on the left has got to be the, the number of loops times the E for one loop. So if you have more loops, then there will be a bigger voltage. There's an EMF as you go around once, maybe from 0 to 1 volt. If you go around another loop, 1 volt up to 2 volts. Around another loop, 2 volts up to 3 volts. So 3 loops makes 0 to 3 if one loop has 1 volt. So the EMF depends on the number of loops. If you wrap these loops around a chunk of iron, which I'm considering saying more about next time, even though it's not, a, not something that's going to be on the final. I can't help feeling that talking about uh, magnetic iron might be a, a useful thing to think about. Um, in any case, uh, if you wrap this around a chunk of iron, that's what this block is, then the magnetic field lines through this, uh, these loops on the left go through the iron, through the magnetic field, through the loops on the right, and, and back again. So these, when wound around a chunk of iron in this way, all loops on the left and the right have the same magnetic field through them, same flux through them. And so the same time rate of change, and so each loop gets the same EMF. So the question in this particular problem is, uh, this is called the transformer. Uh, there's more turns in the secondary. The secondary is the side over here connected to a resistor. The primary is the side that's connected to an AC voltage source. So that's where the energy is coming from, the primary side. There's a voltage source. Uh, pg and &E or something is causing the voltage to go up and down. And so they're putting energy in. And over here on the right is the response circuit that's, that's taking energy out, that's dissipating energy. So in this situation, the voltage, and since the voltage is going up and down, it's an AC voltage. Sometimes it's positive, sometimes it's zero, sometimes it's negative. Because it's oscillating, there's an amplitude. And so that's all we really care about right now is the amplitude of the voltage uh, in this situation, the amplitude is what? Greater in the primary, smaller in the primary, the same, or not enough information to decide. So each set of loops feels the same magnetic flux. So each single loop has the same EMF, 
if there's fewer loops on the primary, then the total EMF is going to be smaller because there are just fewer loops. Any one loop has the same EMF, but there's 10 loops all together. That'll be 10 times that EMF. And the other side has two loops, so that would only be twice the EMF. Um, and so the number of loops tells you the total, the number of loops tells you the total EMF. Uh, and so the answer that had the, the biggest number, that it's smaller in the primary than the secondary. This is a transformer that turns low voltages into large volts, small voltages into big voltages. So B was the answer I was looking for there. Let me rem remind you that power is I times delta V. So if the voltage is larger and energy is still conserved, which it is, that tells you something that tells you the current is going to be smaller. If the voltage is bigger, then the current is going to be smaller if the power <laughs> is going to be the same. So the current through the left-hand side with the smaller voltage will be smaller than the current through the, sorry, will be larger than the current through the right-hand side because the right-hand side has a bigger voltage. So that's the way energy, that's the way power or energy ends up being conserved altogether is that the pow power input uh, on the left is equal to the power output on the right. That's, again, that's for an ideal transformer. Transformers have their own losses. Transformers, you have magnetic fields that are switching back and forth inside something, and it turns out that, that they heat up a little bit also. And in fact, transformers can not just heat up, but, but catch fire, so, or blow up. So, you know, there are problems sometimes with transformers. So, Transformer, the point of a transformer is to raise or lower the AC voltage. This one, the primary, is a small AC voltage. The secondary is a big AC voltage. If I took a transformer like that and I plugged the primary into the wall so it was 100 volts, what would the voltage across the secondary be? Well, it looks like there's about twice as many loops, so it would be about 200 volts. Across, across this resistor rate. So you can step voltage up or down AC voltages with a transformer, and that's what they're used for. 